Astronauts to the moon. Ignition sequence start. Three, two, one. Houston, we have a problem. Liftoff. We have a liftoff. We copy you on the ground. You got a bunch of guys about to turn blue. What you're seeing here is a mirage. Mirage. What's going on everyone? It's Jaronism back with another video for you today. If you're a person that's been researching the shape of the earth, then you have undoubtedly come across a video or a hundred made by some snot-nosed sphere leader who goes on and on about the southern star trails and how, of course, they prove we live on a ball zooming through space. Now, if you're simply married to your beliefs because someone told you and you jump to quick conclusions and say that they only work on a ball, well, to me that's a religious position. When you claim to back science, and by that you mean that you make videos, call others stupid, while repeating things that you were taught in books, well, it doesn't get much more religious than that. Here's an example of somebody so smart, and I mean, he is so smart, he gets to call other people flatards because his intellect is so far beyond what any flat earther could ever even dream of. Here he is, schoolyard logic. But what about the Southern Hemisphere? What will observers in Australia, Southern Africa and Southern South America see when they look south? Well according to the Flat Earth, observers in these lands are going to be looking in completely different directions and they're sat below a sky that rotates above them around a single point. How though can observers on a flat Earth looking south see the same thing when looking in different directions from a flat surface? beneath a single spinning sky. They can't, it's geometrically impossible, and that's why flat arts have to avoid the topic like the plague. Oh, thank goodness for good old science, you know, telling us what's geometrically impossible. And then I'll just show you how it works. So what's happening here is we're having three different people at three different southern continents, all looking in opposite directions, all south according to them, but they all see the same stars in their sky. And this, according to everyone, is impossible. And the reason that you don't want to get dogmatic and claim things are impossible or that they only work on a globe is because you never know. And sometimes you come across something. In this case, Curious J from YouTube uh, showed me what he had bought, which was a dome style, half dome magnifying glass. I put some links down in the description if you wanted to take a look at some of them on Amazon. After you see what they're showing, I think you'll want to get one. Uh, they're fun to play with. And then I also put a couple links to some lasers. Mix those two things together and it is fun, fun, fun till daddy took the T-bird away. Let us continue. Now let me point this out from the beginning because I have to otherwise people will go down crazy street. Before we get started, I gotta say something because otherwise people will just assume it. Uh, I'm not saying that these things are true. I'm not saying that there's a dome. I'm not saying that this is the way the universe works. I'm not saying this is how the southern stars work. I am putting something out that's interesting that I found, hoping that people will run with it and um, kind of do their own testing or will just recognize what we're seeing here in front of us. Now, of course, I could just take the high road, make my life easy. I could even come across as being very smart um, and just be like Jim Panda or Cool Hard Logic or voice of treason and sit back and say it's impossible okay somebody already figured out everything for us Noah Posner died twice gravity science Coriolis morons you know the largest detriment to science is by far those involved and those backing it who, who blindly follow and repeat with no knowledge that they've earned on their own but if you see what we're doing here we're taking these dome pieces and we're holding them up against a circling star pattern and we're looking at Polaris and the northern stars and if you look and we start to kind of peer through the edge of that dome piece we see another point of rotation and guess what it rotates the other direction the only weird thing about it is it doesn't have a point that those stars are going around but do the southern stars have a point that they go around nope the reason why because there is no southern celestial pole what we're looking at is the outer rim of the plane of stars circling above our head, in my opinion. Again, this is fun for everyone to try. You can get one of these, you can play with it, and I'm going to show you some more stuff I did. So the coolest part about this whole thing 
is that it kind of solves all those little problems in one fatal swoop. Because no matter where you're at on those three continents, and you're looking, all of you are looking south, you would all see the same stars. They would just be rendered differently for each person, which would be relative to where you're at um, in relation to the dome or to the glass piece. So, I mean, really cool. And again, they're also rotating the opposite direction, which is required. And they also are rotating around an empty spot, not a star, because there is no southern star. So what we've got is a plane of stars all rotating clockwise. And what we see is the alternate spin uh, due to this atmospheric lensing. Now, you could be saying to yourself right now, well, didn't Cool Hard Logic just say that it was impossible? And we, in fact, just showed it to be possible? Well, then you've been paying attention. Now, this is just my opinion completely, but I can see and think of no reason to be impressed by Cool Hard Logic. What he equals to is basically a priest with a script and a short man's complex. He's basically reading from his holy book. But my holy book! There's no reason to call Flat Earthers flattards 75 times a show unless you really have some sort of personal issue that you need to take your mind off of and project that inner hate out on other people. So I'm, I can't think. I'm, what, cool, hard logic. What's like the opposite of each of those words? So cool would be warm, hard would be soft. Logic would be, I don't know, baloney? Warm, soft, baloney. Oh. Let's, we'll leave that alone. Otherwise, you can present your points rather than act like you came up with them. The ugly wrath of an atheist science believer. They are smart because they think everything in the universe appeared one one millionth of a second after the Big Bang. There it was, in existence. I mean, come on, guys. The man thinks that he came from a monkey. Okay? So he really only knows what Wikipedia tells him. So it's flat tards this, idiocy that, geometrically illiterate, bullocks, cod swallow, horn swoggle, dribble babble do, and wallaby backer science. And now he thinks that he's got this cloak of immunability, but even he drops the ball sometimes. Let's take a look at Cool Hard Logic's understanding of his own model. The second is with the compass. If you take the straight line path between two distant points on a flat Earth, your compass bearing would drift over time, even if you kept the aircraft in level flight. For instance, start flying west and keep the plane in straight flight, and on the flat Earth, your compass is going to drift south of that. Bollocks. So, while calling others flat tards and geometrically illiterate, and pretending to be very smart, he actually shows that he hasn't a clue on how his own balls work. So, the same thing would happen on a globe. Start traveling west and keep the plane in a straight line, and do you think your compass would drift? Of course it would. The only place on the globe that you can travel east or west and not have to turn a little to keep your heading is the equator. Here we see the globe. I'm up uh, near New York, and if I go east, where should I be headed? What would you think? The UK? Uh, possibly Ireland? Africa? Well, actually, it's quite a bit south of even that. Since flat art seem to think that with a round Earth you have to constantly point down to stop aircraft flying off into space and conclude that Earth must be flat because they can't feel the plane flying down, they should, by the same pathetic reasoning, expect a plane flying west to be constantly banking to the right to maintain a westerly course. And remember, the further north the aircraft is, the more pronounced that bank is going to have to be because the tighter the arc is going to be. And yet, not even flatards in North America and Canada have noticed this taking place and waved it around gleefully as proof of their codswallop. If flatards had passports and brains, they would have noticed that none of these effects happen, and never will, because this is bollocks. So none of those effects happen or ever will, even though they happen every single day, and you call other people geometrically challenged. Here I'm actually kind of confused at what your point was, because clearly those things do happen. I'm not sure if you thought at the Arctic Circle that just by heading east or west that you would be able to stay in that exact straight line and come back where you started. Doesn't seem like you know the globe very well. If you want to remain straight, you need to be using a rum line. However, you're piping off here thinking that you're very cool and very smart, and in fact, you don't really have a clue on this one. Uh, this nonsense about planes and how you think that they're all bullocks and calling us pathetic while saying that uh, no planes make turns on the globe. It's pretty funny. If it was a simple mistake, well, oh well, we all make them. 
But you're calling people flat tards and brainless and geometrically illiterate. You're calling people buffoons and idiots throughout the entire videos. I think it's kind of funny. And uh, if you're ever wondering why I don't watch your videos, well, now you know. And so it goes. Cool hard shit the bed. Made a few mistakes. Many people don't realize that the compass on the globe versus the flat earth are nearly the same. Here you can see north marked and then there's three compasses near north. And you can just look at this either from the flat earth perspective or picture it as the globe perspective and see that with each move towards the east, you need to be readjusting for the north. So you would move a little bit to the right and kind of swing your body from 12 o'clock to 11 o'clock. And so I don't know about where you're from, but where I'm from, that readjust is called turning. All right, so now we move on to Voice of Treason and his little tidbit on the southern stars. Let's have a listen, shall we? On the flat earth model, the north is the center and the south is a ring around it. The stars would have to be arranged in a dome shape over the flat earth. In this model, it makes no sense that people in the north cannot see the southern stars and vice versa. Hi, my name is Voice of Reason. And I'm about to talk to you all like a chimpanzee. Hope you enjoy it. Because I trust men, and you should join me. I feel far better if others choose to hand their faculties to men as well as me. They know more than me. I'm deathly afraid that some people are actually using their own minds. It actually frightens me, and my atheism. I will now tell you, word for word, the nonsense that we are taught about science. You can trust me. You can trust science. They have never lied. And it is particularly absurd that people in the outer ring can all see the same southern stars but not the northern stars at all. There should be nothing blocking their view of all the northern stars. And in case I didn't mention it yet, I like to build straw men for a living. Notice how I said the stars would have to be arranged in a dome shape on flat earth. And then I destroy my own shadow model and prove it doesn't work. I'm brilliant. But they are completely different stars in the north and in the south. How would this work in the flat earth model? Well, to put it simply, it could <laughs> In any flat earth model, the stars would have to be arranged in a semispherical dome over the flat circular earth. My question is, who says? Are you making up the rules? Because that's pretty easy to defeat an argument when it's a straw man because you built it. You also place the dome at about 30,000 miles high. And Polaris would have to be in the center. And that would seem to explain what we see in the north. But south of the equator, the outer concentric ring in the flat earth model, now you have huge problems. When you look to the south in South America, in Southern Africa, or in Australia, you see the same clockwise spinning stars. Yet people in those three locations would be looking in three different directions when looking to the south. Yet somehow they see the same thing. Where could the southern celestial pole and the circumpolar stars be in this model? Are they in many places at once? No, it simply cannot work. I'm not quite sure if you know that I bet every single one of us in your audience is older than three years old. So by constructing another straw man, it's very easy for you to knock down and make yourself look great. That's the best way to do science. Declare that there is no possible way. Something can work in one, two, or even three other ways. It simply cannot work when you are closed off to that possibility. You're supposed to be a skeptic. And instead, you talk to people like they're children. Like they're chimpanzees. Alright, enough of those two guys. I've heard all I can hear. 
Here what I'm doing is uh, sending different laser lights through that half dome magnifying glass. And if you've ever done any star watching, if you've ever zoomed in uh, with your camera, this is what you see. So I'm sitting behind the camera here, pointing my laser pointer, different areas of the glass, turning the glass inside out, upside down. Um, but some things look like the moon, believe it or not. Uh, I think coming up here, we've got uh, a star, so just so you can see what a star looks like. And then go back and see more of what I'm seeing when I use that half dome magnifying glass. So I definitely recommend people pick it up, get one if you want to do that kind of test or you want to play with it. Um, I think you can get, and like I said, the links are in the description. I think you can get the uh, one for $13 and uh, that's pretty cheap. On top of that, I think there's a package deal too where you can get a laser pen as well and the entire thing is under 20. So definitely check out those links in the description. And also occasionally this looks like Dwayne Kellum's uh, balloon launch is what, we, what the sun looks like. If you get around to the side of it, you can actually see almost like a filament in there. I'd have to show people sometime. Got some videos on that. But you can see that looks like a star. It looks like it's got the waviness that we see when we zoom in with the telescope. That's one of my favorites. And what I did there was I opened a box and put the camera inside the box and then put the half dome uh, magnifying glass on top so it could see through and then used uh, the laser pointer just to kind of guide the sun to see what was going on. Again, what I'm doing is just shining a laser light uh, right through the half dome mirror and casting it onto a piece of paper. So I think some of those look incredibly like the sun. I think many of them look like stars. Here I am and I'm finally uh, noticing that many of these things look like everything we see around us light wise uh, here's the half dome you can see it up close and personal I was just taping from behind it this time and you can see how it projects um, pretty interesting stuff here we're just showing that the rays coming off the Sun uh, reminded us a lot of the rays and the image before this where it's got that big up and down bar there that's gonna kinda spin to a left and right here shortly and I know many people have seen that particular shirt. So that's important. So there we go again. Shining in the magnifying glass and just kind of getting an idea. And I know when you zoom in and look at the stars, there's a ton of people who have that same observation. Very interesting stuff, huh? All with a little half paperweight magnifying glass, which is also good for grandma if she needs to read. And so that's it, a fun new toy. I think you should check out the description or you can just go to Amazon on your own if you don't want to uh, support me with 2% of your Amazon purchase if you click the Amazon link. Um, any of the links I put up in the description that have Amazon products. All right, so I hope you enjoyed the video. I'm happy because even if this isn't exactly how the Southern Stars work, I hope it shows Globers that things they were so sure of might not be as sure as everyone thought. So with one piece of glass, the southern stars have basically been open to a whole new method of uh, exploring and testing. But we fixed it all with just that one piece of glass. There's no southern star because there is no southern star. There's no southern pole star. They circle due to the atmosphere. And people on three separate continents can all see the same exact stars. Something I'm not sure if uh, yesterday or the day before very many people knew so as I said even if it isn't the answer I think we took a big step today towards the answer and to cool hard logic I wish I could say that I have uh, any respect for you but I don't listening to your videos absolutely infuriates me flat earthers are some of the best people I've ever met in my life uh, they care about each other they care about the world they care about the environment and they're actively trying to make the world a better place while you go around and degrade them for just doing science. That's what we're doing. People are out doing science. They're testing, exploring the world, and you think you're better than everyone. And I think it's pathetic, and I think it proves to me that you're not anywhere near as uh, impressive to me as every flat earther I've ever talked to. So I'm proud to be a flat earther. It means you aren't stuck in the deception. And one day, you're gonna see it. Maybe it's six months away, maybe it's six years away, maybe 60 years, 
But in the end, you'll see when there's no space travel, there's no pictures of the Earth, there's no satellites, and there's no truth, that you had people here trying to tell the world that they have been deceived, and you and your buddies go around calling people names just because. Well, enjoy it. One day you'll realize what you've done, and Voice of Reason, and all these guys, what you've done to humanity, because you're afraid, really, to look into what's going on, because you might have been lied to. And so, do your own research. Get a half dome magnifying glass below. Big thanks to my buddy Curious J. He'll also be on Globusters again Monday night, 6 p.m. to 9 p.m. Pacific on TruthFrequencyRadio.com. And to all the haters, let me let you in on just a little tiny secret about this flat Earth awakening, this movement, whatever you want to call it, this truth. Try all you want, try all you may. You can't stop. stop. So be kind, don't lie. And open up your mind. There's truth inside. Till next time, guys. This has been Jaren. Peace. And the reason that you don't want to get dogmatic and claim things are impossible or that they only work on a globe is because you never know. And sometimes you come across something. In this case, Curious J from YouTube uh, showed me what he had bought, which was a dome style, half dome magnifying glass. I put some links down in the description if you wanted to take a look at some of them on Amazon. After you see what they're showing, I think you'll want to get one. Uh, they're fun to play with. And then I also put a couple links to some lasers. Mix those two things together. And it is fun, fun, fun. Till daddy took the T-bird away. Let us continue. Now let me point this out from the beginning. Because you. And you jump to quick conclusions. And say that they only work on a ball. Well, to me that's a religious position. When you claim to back science, and by that you mean that you make videos, call others stupid, while repeating things that you were taught in books, well, it doesn't get much more religious than that. Here's an example of somebody so smart, and I mean, he is so smart, he gets to call other people flatards because his intellect is so far beyond what any flat earther could ever even dream of. Here he is, schoolyard logic. But what about the southern hemisphere? What will observers in Australia, Southern Africa, and Southern South America see when they look south? Well, according to the Flat Earth, observers in these lands are going to be looking in completely different directions, and they're sat below a sky that rotates above them around a single point. How, though, can observers on a Flat Earth looking south see the same thing when looking in different directions from a flat surface beneath a single spinning sky? They can't. It's geometrically impossible. And that's why flat arts have to avoid the topic like the plague. Oh, thank goodness for good old science, you know, telling us what's geometrically impossible. And then I'll just show you how it works. So what's happening here is we're having three different people at three different southern continents, all looking in opposite directions, all south according to them, but they all see the same stars in their sky. And this, according to everyone, is impossible. Astronauts to the moon. <laughs> Ignition sequence start. Three, two, one. Houston, we have a problem. Liftoff. We have a liftoff. We got to go on the ground. You got a bunch of guys about to turn blue. What you're seeing here is a mirage. 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 What's going on, everyone? It's Jaronism back with another video for you today. If you're a person that's been researching the shape of the Earth, then you have undoubtedly come across a video or a hundred made by some snot-nosed sphere leader who goes on and on about the southern star trails and how of course they prove we live on a ball zooming through space. Now if you're simply married to your beliefs because someone told you I have to otherwise people go down crazy street 
Before we get started, I gotta say something because otherwise people will just assume it. Uh, I'm not saying that these things are true. I'm not saying that there's a dome. I'm not saying that this is the way the universe works. I'm not saying this is how the southern stars work. I am putting something out that's interesting that I found, hoping that people will run with it and um, kind of do their own testing or will just recognize what we're seeing here in front of us. Now, of course, I could just take the high road, make my life easy. I could even come across as being very smart um, and just be like Jim Panda or Cool Hard Logic or Voice of Treason and sit back and say, it's impossible. Okay. Somebody already figured out everything for us. Noah Posner died twice. Gravity. Science. Corey. 